Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Herp Monday number 35 and we have a really cool one for, one for you today. Um, today's animal is something really unique found only on a French island. Really, really interesting. Today we are going to be talking about the... Bam! The Corsican Fire Salamander. So, Corsican fire salamander, scientific name Salamandra corsica, again that Salamandra corsica, it is part of the family Salamandridae. Um, we've had this family before. These are the true salamanders. These usually have rough skin and no costal or rib grooves. Um, it, you, this species used to be part of the um, regular fire salamander, which was Salamandra salamandra, uh, which is found on the continent of Europe. Um, it's very common. However, through some research, especially in mitochondrial DNA, it was determined that the Corsican fire salamander was a completely separate species. Um, as the name would suggest, for those of you in Europe, um, this is native only to the Corsica Island, um, off the French coast, I believe. And I know it's, uh, Corsica is part of France. Um, I, be I believe, God, I hope so. Uh, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, so, yes, native only to the Corsica Island. That would mean that it's endemic. Um, we've talked about endemic species before. Endemic species are found in certain locations and nowhere else in the world. Now, these mainly live in the deciduous mountain forests of Corsica. Um, think mid-range slopes. Um, not really too close to the sea level, but definitely not as high at the mountain peak. Um, something else, it does not seem to like shrubs or heavy fern growth. It seems to heavily avoid these. Um, the reason why it goes for these deciduous mountain forests the deciduous mountain forests are very well known to have constant humidity and very moderate temperature. Get in down in that leaf litter, underneath that leaf litter, these things, um, you know, are hanging out. That leaf litter really holds um, that moisture in, in there. Now, these are a relatively large um, salamander. Um, the adults are about 120 to 300 millimeters, which that's about four and a half to 12 inches. That's a pretty significant um, salamander. Definitely not a small friend. Um, males, as most salamanders go, males are smaller than females. Um, we've talked about this in reptiles and amphibians. It's very common for females to be larger due to the larger the female, the more eggs you can as you can tell from this picture and or the previous picture and this picture they do have a really sh uh, kind of short brown wide head the head is wider than long they have relatively stubby toes and a relatively stubby uh, rounded off tail i guess i should now these are a glossy black i'm sure you've seen from these pictures a real glossy looks real wet real smooth um, so this is kind of different than most of the other salamanders in salamandridae. Remember I said in salamandridae, the, they usually have rough skin and no rib grooves. Well, these are the complete opposite. These have costal grooves and they do not have rough skin. So, what can you do? <laughs> now, also, on top of the skin, something you're probably painfully aware of is they are covered in yellow blotches um so this very black and very yellow blotches um as we've talked many times that means it is aposomatic coloring um you know that coloring means stay away from me i'm poisonous or do not eat me i'm poisonous um and these do have poison so right here these parotid glands which are right behind the ears um they have these two parotid glands um now the parotid glands they're kind of reduced in the corsican fire salamander 
still relatively large, but compared to other parotid glands in the genus Salamandra, these are actually pretty reduced. And then they have these, they have poison glands that run in parallel down the sides of the body. And then they have two irregular rows of poison glands that runs down the tail. So this thing is basically a walking poison dispensary. Um, please do not eat this. If you touch it, touch it with gloves. Be careful. Um, especially the parotid glands. You can touch the sides. Not really too much of an issue, but I definitely wouldn't look. Um, in terms of food, these things eat anything it can. Um, insects, small fish, small larvae. I, if it can fit in its mouth, it's going to eat it. Um, or if it can chew it enough to get it down its throat, it's going to eat it. These things are very, very easy to feed, and that is why they are actually apparently available in the pet trade. I personally could not find it, but I did find a um, regular fire salamander, so salamandra salamandra, which is from the European continent um, in the actual mainland, um, seem to do quite well, very easy. They're sold for about $40, 40 US dollars um, from what I can find, apparently very common. Um, chances are you can find some specialists that have this exact species or if you're in America You can probably just find one of these Now in terms of numbers even though this is endemic and only found on one small island um, They don't seem to be any trouble. There's not really much human impact on Corsica So these things seem to be doing all right There's a the general threats of deforestation if more people try and go up to the island, but these are definitely not of any concern as far as like. So now, interesting fact that we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about the reproduction. First, we're going to lead off into like what they reproduce around. So when these um, animals reproduce, they really depend on constant water in creeks coming down from the summits of the mountains. That, that clear, constant water really supports good development of larvae over a hot summer. So they seem to do it in the spring. Um, they, they are born, so the larvae are born when the snow melt happens, basically. And that's when that first snow melt comes through and it really flushes out those streams. That's when the stream is basically optimal larva. And then the surroundings around that stream and those ponds and pools um, the surroundings and those stone uh, runs around those really offer the adults good preferred places to hide during the summer droughts or the daylight day because you know, hot summer uh, you know very mediterranean but the interesting fact about these is that these actually have a reproductive ability of vip by vipery by viparity um, basically, a German herpetologist, Robert Mertens, found a pre pregnant Corsican fire salamander that um, he followed, watched, wanted to see how it was produced. And it turns out that that particular pregnant uh, fire salamander gave birth to four offspring that didn't have gills and already had that characteristic black and yellow of the adults. At the same time, he found in a pool normally developing aquatic larvae with the three um, feathery external gills, which is apparently very characteristic of this species on each side, the three gills on each side, and the camouflage, you know, a brown camouflage that blends into the pond substrate. So essentially what we have here is the ability for these fire salamanders to not only lay as larvae, but to also have direct development happen. This is really important for these very um, wide swings in temperature and humidity and water availability on these islands. If you don't have a good snow, then you won't really have that much snow melt. So if the ponds start getting overcrowded, that allows the females to basically retain um, their young a little bit longer and actually have direct development. 
And something else that is known about a lot of salamanders is that the females can actually store sperm within their own bodies for, I want to say, up to six months. So that basically means is once breeding season happens, if the conditions are not optimal at that time, the female can then um, just withhold the sperm until she can get pregnant later on when hopefully more rains come or things like that. And then if the if situation does become even more dire, they are able to retain those and have direct developed larva. Super, super interesting. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. I hope to see you again. Uh, please leave me a comment of something you'd like to see me. I've been getting a hanker in for some uh, requests to do. But once again, thank you. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And...